Welcome to No Rares Required, episode 27, Simic Transform. This set, along with DMU, has really revealed to me my preference for two-color archetypes. And although I think drafters usually end up in more than two colors when you add green to the equation because of the available fixing, I have found myself in Simic or blue-green, especially after a Demir start where black dries up. If you've had the same experiences as me, then Soltai, Blue Black Green, is a common splash for Demir. So basic, uh, becoming full Simic is a very easy place to plan to pivot. So today will be about Simic as two colors or as two colors and a splash. And I'll recommend that you watch Isaiah underscore MTG on Twitch if you want to paint with all the colors of the wind. The um, Simic archetype is Transform, where you look to build synergies around the cards that transform, whether they are incubator tokens, battles, or double-faced Phyrexians. That's at least one strategy. Another strategy, and one that I tend to lean towards, is a controlling attrition deck, where you sub out your arsenal of black removal from Demir for big green creatures that gum up the board. There's also a very aggressive deck, so I'll do my best to talk through where I think the cards branch into alternative strategies as I discuss how I've been approaching Simic. So let's get started. This is the last blue archetype to be covered, and yes, it will start with the same two commons as every blue archetype. These commons are just too good. However, I did drop Preening Champion to Tier 1. You have cards like Temporal Cleansing and Artistic Refusal that benefit off the extra body, but since I'm planning on playing some big beefy creatures, uh, the board doesn't go as wide as it does in Azorius Knights, or is it Convoke? And I'm not as impressed by the battles, certainly not compared to the power level of Invasion of Amonkhet in Demir, so the early flying is also not as important. Still an amazing card, but not a pack one, pick one, or um, it, it not really a pick one in pack two or three, I should say, if I've decided to be Simic, since outside of Simic it's still a great pack one, pick one. Next up at tier one we have Afara's Dispersal. Transforming your cards takes time, and Simic is usually slow to get stabilized. Uh, and can be pressured early. Dispersal is a great response to early pressure, and if you happen to find yourself in the aggro build, bouncing a blocker for three can work as great tempo. My last tier one common that I want as many as I can grab is Assimilate Essence. Simic doesn't have a lot of great two drops, and although it's great to counter a card that costs more than two for the value game, surviving until your late game is also important, and I've often found myself countering my opponent's early plays. If you've picked up three or four essences, or an artistic refusal or two, you still have counters up for your opponent's late game bombs. Now for tier two. Cyba Cryptomancer is amazing at protecting your big green beef from removal. It's more of a combat trick than it is a creature, so when building my curve I don't count these as actual two drops. I still want as many as I can grab, but I do plan to take these a little later, like pick six onward, since they are often undervalued and can wheel. Also at tier 2 we have Arachnoid Adaptation. This is often a one-cost removal spell when played at the right time. As with any combat trick, you have to play around removal, or have a Cryptomancer to ensure it doesn't get two for one, but the fact that it untaps, gives reach, and plus two plus two often catches your opponent off guard. I, run, I, I ran three of them in my recent video if you want evidence of their efficacy. This is my secret weapon for Simic, since they often wheel and are incredibly undervalued. Now for tier three or four. Tier four is a special tier that I brought in for this set. In pack one, I think you're better off picking up fixing like Blighted Burgeoning, the Enchant Land that makes an incubator token, and especially Rugged Highlands, the green red tap land, since a green heavy Simic deck can play very similar to Gruel or Red Green and Dismissal Backwater, the blue-black tap land, since a blue-heavy Simic deck can play very similar to Demir or blue-black. 
We also start to see some differentiation in the strategies at this tier. Eyes of Gytaxias is best in the Transform deck that leans heavily on Phyrexian Incubate synergies. You don't want it in the aggro deck, and it's fine, decent filler in the attrition deck since it draws a card. Temporal Cleansing, I also put it tier 4 since it is sorcery speed. It doesn't work very well in the aggro deck, but I love it in the attrition deck. If they get a bomb through your counter spells, you can use this to bounce it back into their library, and then next time around, ensure that it gets countered. In the transform deck, it's just good filler. Cosmic Hunger, I also put it tier 4. I like this the most in the aggressive or aggro strategy, since it's better in the early game when you can play it to push damage through before the board stalls, and before your opponent has mana up to play removal and response, since, like a combat trick, this is prone to getting 2 for one But with big green creatures or big incubator tokens, this can work as removal, which is usually in short supply in Simic. And it goes late for removal, around pick 5 or 6. Converter Beast, I also put at tier 4. This is really for the Incubator Transform deck, and definitely too slow for the aggro deck. In the Attrition strategy, you usually have better late game threats. Well, I should say hopefully you have better threats, but paying 6 for a 5-6 across two bodies is still pretty decent filler in any green deck. I think it makes a decent signal that green is open if you see these on pick 8 or later. My last tier 4 common is Wary Thespian. You may want as many of these as you can get your hands on if you are in the aggro deck. It pairs especially nice with Tetsuko for 3 unblockable damage a turn. I also like that it can trade up on defense and is decent filler since Simic tends to be light on 2 drops. It also goes late around pick 7 or 8 and I believe is also a decent signal that green is open. Now for the uncommons. Simic doesn't have any mythic level uncommons, but it does have 6 that I put at tier 1. First up is Artistic Refusal. Stalling the board until your late game threats is the name of the game, well, outside of aggro. Having a wall of creatures sitting back on defense means you most likely have the creatures to convoke, and there are a lot of bombs in this set, and I've enjoyed having as many Artistic Refusals as I can grab to answer them. Also at tier 1 we have Skyclave Aerialist. A 2-1 flyer for 2 is great in the aggro strategy and you can make it unblockable with Tetsuko. And for the uh, transform and attrition strategies you can flip it into Skyclave Invader, a 2-4 Phyrexian that draws you a card. This blocks the 2-2 flying Windrakes in the set quite well and it's blue-green um, so you don't even have to take the 2 damage to flip this uh, instead of having to pay life off of the Phyrexian mana. Also at tier 1 we have Captive Weird. I've enjoyed playing these in all three strategies. There isn't a one cost creature in blue and green um, for the aggro strategy that you're giving up to play this. So it's great even there. And then it flips into completed conjurer. I'm not usually aiming to flip this on turn 3, except maybe in the aggro strategy if I have no other plays in hand. Uh, the extra card can be played until the next turn and is nice for some mid to late game dig, and for being arguably the best blue on common, they uh, can get picked up around 4 or 5, which is one of the many reasons I end up in blue so often. Now for green, uh, Tandem Takedown I put at tier 1. You want to pick up as many of these as you were offered. Simic is incredibly lacking in spot removal, and Tandem Takedown is your best option. Since it targets two creatures, it's less likely to get two for one if both creatures are shooting for lethal damage at their target. The additional damage off giving both creatures plus one plus zero has also helped me find lethal. Being the best removal in green, you're going to need to pick these up around 3 or 4. 
Streetwise Negotiator, I also put at tier 1. As I've mentioned, two drops can be difficult to come by, and this is your best option. At the beginning of the set, uh, these were getting passed uh, super late because people didn't realize that they were 3 threes for 2. Those days are gone, and now they get picked up slightly below average for an uncommon around pick 4 or 5. It pairs especially well with a flipped Skyclave Invader, the 2-4 flyer from earlier, uh, so you can smack them for 5 damage. And I want them regardless of which Simic strategy I end up playing. My last tier 1 uncommon is Emoti, Celebrant of Bounty. Less interesting if you were straight aggro, since it is a 5 drop, and less interesting if you have a metric ton of counter spells in the attrition deck, but it certainly has a place in my heart. I enjoy Emoti the most in Gruul, where I'm aiming to ramp to a bunch of 6 plus mana value creatures, or in a soul tie space where I have a bunch of black removal that this can find with Cascade. But Emoti can pay, pair very nicely with the 6 cost land cyclers, especially Tidal Terror, um, which can get in for unblockable damage later in the game since after you've stalled the board, you do need some sort of strategy to close out the game. And Emoti goes late. It's not uncommon to see Emoti around tick 6 or 7. Now for tier 2. Tangled Skyline is amazing in Simic, outside of the aggro strategy. The 5 life and a 5 5 with reach, not to mention all your other transformed Phyrexians getting reach, is absolutely wonderful at helping you stabilize. It goes late for an uncommon around pick 5 or 6, and I'll happily take as many as I'm offered. Also at tier 2 is Sandstalker Moloch. I've enjoyed this regardless of what strategy I'm in. Flashing this is uh, flashing this in is a um, surprise. Flashing this in as a surprise blocker um, or additional damage that they didn't account for on the crackback, um, or in response to a blue or black spell for additional dig is great. Wallach also goes late for an uncommon around pick six or seven. And we got Halo Forager, uh, I put it tier 2 as well. Halo Forager is a payoff to picking up black fixing in pack 1. Although you won't have cheap black removal like Final Flourish uh, to hit with this on turn 5, Dispersal on turn 6, or Cosmic Hunger on turn 5, um, or Tandem Takedown on turn 6 are all great targets, and Halo Forager is worth splashing in most blue or black decks. It also tends to go late for how good it is, in my opinion, around pick 4 or 5. Now for tier 3, Tetsuko Umazawa Fugitive is for the Simic Aggro deck. Giving your 3-1 Thespians and 2-1 Aerialists unblockable can be quite the beating. Unlike Izzet and Azorius, though, you will have to work to make this card work. The upside, Tetsuko goes light, around 6 or 7, so you can usually find one if the opportunity presents itself. Omenhawker, I put it tier 3. You want this card desperately if you are in the Transform deck, since it works as a 1 cost mana ramper that taps for 2. Outside of flipping things, though, you can pass on this card. It also goes super late for an uncommon, around pick 8 or 9. Astral Wingspan, I also put at tier 3. It works nicely with a Cryptomancer to protect your enchanted creature, and sometimes a big beefy flyer is exactly what you need. It also draws a card, so it's nice at, at eventually outvaluing your opponent. It also goes late, around pick 7 or 8. Herbology Instructor, I put at tier 3. We haven't gotten to Golgari or Gruul where this card really shines, but it stalls incredibly well, and then it turns into an okay removal option later in the game. It gets picked up around 3 or 4, so it can be hard to find the right time to pick these up, but I do like them in the Transform and Attrition decks. Finn, the Fangbearer, I also put at Tier 3. Similar to Herbology Instructor, it does wonders at slowing the game down, and I really enjoy Finn in the Attrition deck. It also goes, uh, gets picked up around 4 or 5, so it can be tricky to pick up. My last Tier 3 Uncommon is Invasion of Pyrulia. This is the payoff for being the Transform deck. It goes late, you can pick these up around 8 or 9, 
And after you get through the four defense, it flips into Gargantuan Slabhorn, a 4-4 Trample Ward 2 creature that gives all of your transform permanence, Trample, and Ward 2. The Trample is nice at pushing lethal with your 5-5 Incubator tokens that you got from uh, Converter Beast or from Tangled Skyline, and the Ward 2 can protect you, at least for a short while, uh, from your transformed creatures getting removed. Now for the rares. I'm going to skip Chromeho Seed Shark and Zephyr Singer, both amazing blue rares that go in every archetype, um, but we've covered them before. I haven't had a chance to talk about green yet, and Glistening Dawn is the best green rare. It performs best in Golgari, where you have Vat Keeper to further grow your incubator tokens, and in the Simic Transform deck. 8 mana to make two four fours is the worst that it gets, and I think its sweet spot is when you have 6 mana, since you can create the tokens and then activate one on defense as well. If you open this up in pack 1, pick 1, or pack 2, pick 1, this is a good reason to pivot into Simic. At tier 2, we have Doomscar Warrior, a 4-3 backup 1 with Trample that helps you dig for your late game threats if it or the creature you target with backup deals damage to a player or battle. Nothing special about it in Simic, but a great addition to any green deck. And then Polychronos Reborn, I also put at tier 2. Its best archetype is Simic, in my opinion. A 4-5 for 3 is great if you are the aggro deck. The uh, Reach is great if you are Attrition, and it transforms for the Transformation deck into Polychronos Engine of Ruin, a 6-6 Reach lifelink that turns into two 3-3s, three one with Reach and one with lifelink when it dies. An absolute bomb and a great reason to be mostly green. Gyruda Doom of Depths is worth a mention. I put it at tier 2, since I think Simic is its best archetype. Of the blue and black archetypes, Simic has the biggest beef. A 6-6 six, six for 6 that often grabs an additional card, but hitting a 6-cost land cycler is the dream, and you might just be running them to trigger a Modi. Kogla and Yardaro I put at tier 2, and is the payoff for picking up red fixing in pack 1. The double pip can be intimidating to splash, but Kogla and Yodaro is worth it. It often removes their biggest threat when it enters the battlefield, and I do think it is better in Gruul, where you don't have to splash it, but Simic is its best, uh, second best archetype since, as I mentioned before, green heavy Simic deck uh, can play very similar to Gruul, where you aim to ramp to your big beefy things like Kogla. I'm going to skip Yorian, Sky Nomad, which I've found best in Demir, and Glissa, Herald of Predation, which is best in Golgari, but has synergy especially in the Transform Simic deck. Ancient Imperiosaur is worth mentioning just because I haven't gotten to cover the top green rares yet. It's best in Celestia or Gruul, where you aim to have more Convoke synergies or ramp, but in Simic it at least gives you a Convoke payoff for a pre uh, champion. Lastly, I'll mention uh, Hidetsugu and Kairi. They are worth splashing in any blue archetype. Now for the mythics. Vorinclex I put at tier 1. A 6-6 six, six trample reach for 5 that grabs 2 forests from your deck when it enters the battlefield. Then for 8 you can transform it into... The Grand Evolution! First, you must mill 10 cards, which can be scary against black has, uh, because of Breach the Multiverse, but you get to put two creatures onto the battlefield. Great for finding your Simic beef. Then you distribute 7 plus 1 plus 1 counters to make your beef even beefier, and finally all your creatures can fight their creatures for 1 mana. I'm going to skip Invasion of New Phyrexia. I covered it in my guide to Azorius. It's equally good in Simic. I put it at tier 1. Borgamos and Fibblethip is a mythic I haven't gotten to cover yet, and if you are in Timor, um, a green-blue-red combination, Borgamos is worth splashing. 
its best in Girl, but I've found Simic to be its second best archetype since I Isaac Convoke tends to be looking to go wide rather than play big creatures. It's a 6 5 for 5 that draws a card when it enters the battlefield or attacks. Then you can discard lands to deal 2 damage for each land discarded, and it's very difficult to remove Baborgamos and Th Fibblethip because you can blink it into your library for 1 and a blue. I'm going to skip Sword of Once and Future. I found it to be best in Golgari, where you can maximize the surveil and having both Cosmic Hunger along with Final Flourish. Um, my last mythic worth a mention is Ren and Realmbreaker. For one double pip green, you get a Planeswalker that makes your lands tap for any color, so I tend to count it as fixing if I'm splashing. And for plus one loyalty, you can turn a land into a 3-3 with Vigilance, Hexproof, and Haste. For minus two loyalty, you can use it to dig to a permanent, the least used ability, in my opinion. And then for minus seven, you get an emblem that allows you to play lands and permanents from your graveyard, including itself. Since Civic tends to be a defensive strategy, you can usually protect Rin until the ultimate, and then be a, being able to recast all of your green beef is usually too much for your opponent to handle. So that's it for my take on Simic. Next week I'll be covering a different archetype, and I can promise you one thing, it won't be blue. <laughs> we have five archetypes left, and only three more episodes before Lord of the Rings, so get ready for some double episodes. I hope you found this guide useful. Um, I, I, I host a community draft every Tuesday on Twitch. The link is below in the description if you want to come play against me. Always looking for new faces. And uh, remember to hit, uh, click like and subscribe. I appreciate it. And good luck in your future drafts. I'll see you all next week.